Hi guys! In this lesson, I will try to explain the subject of electrical current in detail. Friends who watch the video until the end will learn much better what current is, its relationship with voltage, and different types of current. Current is the flow of electrons in a circuit in one direction. To create electricity, we need electrons to flow in the same direction around a circuit. Copper wires are often used to build the circuit. Because the atoms that make up the copper have an outermost weakly bound electron or a valence orbital that can move freely inside the metal. This free electron is very easy to transport, so copper is the most used and a good conductor. It is very easy for free electrons to move between copper atoms. But this happens randomly in any direction that is not useful to us. In order for us to take advantage of this, we need a large number of electrons to flow in the same direction throughout the circuit. We can then place charges like lamps in the path of these moving electrons. So, electrons pass through them and then they produce energy such as light and heat. To do this, we need to force the electrons to move. Here, we can do this by applying a voltage. Voltage is the driving force in the movement of electrons. It is like pressure with potential energy in a water pipe. The more pressure we have, the more water can flow. The more voltage we have, the more electrons can flow. So, we need a lot of electrons to flow along a circuit and through our lamps to get them to shine brightly. However, the cable and lamps can only handle a certain number of electrons passing through them. Just like a pipe is rated to handle a certain amount of water passing through it or a certain pressure. We call the electron flow current and measure it in ampere. It is represented by the capital letter A. In circuits, we denote it with the capital letter I. For example, this fuse has the number 5 on it and a capital letter A next to it. This means it is rated for 5 amps of current. For example, this laptop charger tells us that the device needs an input between 100 and 240 volts and 1.5 amps alternating current or AC to operate. The charger will then convert this to output 19.5 volts and 3.3 amps direct current or DC. DC and AC are different types of electricity. The sockets in our homes provide AC. Electrons of this type do not flow in a continuous application. Instead, they will move back and forth like the tide of a sea. Our DC electricity, such as power and mobile phones, electrical appliances. In this type, electrons flow in only one direction, much like water in a river. We transport electricity from power stations with AC, alternating current, and send it to our homes and cities. AC here because it is much more efficient than using DC and can be transported over much longer distances. In addition, simple mods are designed in a simple way, very easy to use. To measure current in a circuit, we need to connect an ammeter in series. Think of it like a water meter. In order for us to know how much water is flowing in the pipe, the water must pass through the water meter. Likewise, we need the number of electrons passing through our ammeter to know how much electricity is flowing in our circuit. If you have a set of material bag, I recommend getting one of these measuring instruments. They are quite cheap and very useful. If we connect a lamp in series to a battery, we can connect it in series and measure the current using a multimeter. If we connect this 1.5 volt battery and this lamp with a resistance of 1 ohm, we get a current of 1.5 amps. Again, if we add another 1 ohm resistance lamp to the circuit connected in series, then we add more resistance to the circuit. Thus, the electrons slow down. In this case, we get a value of 0.75 amps. The location of the resistors in series circuits does not matter. So, it doesn't matter if the multimeter is in front of or after the lamp. Either way is correct and we can measure properly. Now, if we connect two lamps in parallel to the circuit, both with 1 ohm resistance, and connect it to a 1.5 volt battery, then we will draw 3 amps from the battery but we get 1.5 amps from the arm with each lamp. This is because the path of the electrons is split. Therefore, some of the electrons pass through lamp X and some flow through lamp Y. In this example, both lamps have an equal resistance, so the current is divided equally. But if the lamps are of different resistance, the current is unevenly divided. For example, if lamp X has a resistance of 1 ohm and lamp Y has a resistance of 3 ohms, 
we read the value of 2 amps in the mains. We get 1.5 amps on the arm of lamp X and 0.5 amps on the arm of lamp Y. Cables and lamps are rated to handle only a certain amount of current. If they exceed this, they can burn. So, we have to add resistors that limit the amount of current that can flow. These act like speed bumps and slow down the electrons. We can also think of resistors as twisting a garden hose. The kink adds resistance to the flow of water, which reduces the amount of water that can flow out of the hose. Similarly, we can add resistors to the circuit and it slows down the electrons. For example, this LED is rated at 25 milliamps and 3.3 volts, but our battery is rated at 9 volts. So, if we were to connect the LED to the battery, it would just burn out because it can't handle that much voltage and current. So, to stop the battery from burning out, we need to place a resistor into the circuit. In this case, we'll use a 470 ohm resistor to bring the voltage and current down to a safe level for the LED. If you want to see how much current is flowing through your electrical appliances in your home, you can use one of these energy meters. Simply plug in your devices. It measures voltage, amps, watts, power factor, and then you can even calculate the cost of using the device. We have seen that we can use resistors to reduce the amount of current flowing in the circuit and to protect our devices. Another thing we can use is a fuse. Basically, fuses have a thin piece of wire rated to handle a certain amount of current through them. When more current passes than the current value written on them, the wire inside melts. Thus, the circuit becomes open and the load we connect is not damaged. Okay, that's all I'm going to tell you guys for this video about electrical current. You can check our channel for more videos. I hope this video was helpful and you liked it. Please write your comments and questions under the video. Hope to see you in the next lesson. Goodbye.